tell me something about about the effect that Strauss had on you. When did you first meet him, and uh, how how quickly did you realize um, his excellence? Well, uh, I returned to graduate school in September of 1944. I, th I thought the war was going to be over sooner than it was. And I was not doing any war work of any significance. You had been in Washington working in the New Deal somewhere. Well, I, I began in the executive office of the president in the news department, and I, I moved from there to the, I think it was the silk substitution unit. <laughs> <laughs> silk was cut off. Then there was a run on, uh, what's the fiber that silk substitute? Oh, rayon. Probably. Rayon, yeah. right. And, and all the companies were coming to Washington to get uh, rationing. And, uh, and I was there. You were Mr. Rayon. That's right. <laughs> but I wasn't there very long. And I was about a year in the War Production Board, a year in OPA. And so, and so from, then to, from there to Yale? Oh, no, I was, uh, before I was, uh, this is after I graduated from Yale. Oh, sorry, sorry. From there yeah. to grad school, though. But uh, I was in the cons Consumer Durable Goods Division of OPA, and the chairman of that division was Harvey Mansfield. Oh, <laughs> senior. <laughs> right. But you, you were headed towards, uh, how did you get to the new school, then? Well, that's an interesting story, <laughs> which, I, which I tell at great length in the introduction to my recent book. Uh, I, I, when I left Yale, Yale, I did so with the understanding in my own mind that I would find another graduate program because the reason I left Yale was because the program was so unsatisfactory. There really were no good courses in political philosophy. Mm -hmm. You had already decided you were more interested in politics at this point and wanted to study that? Well, in the spring of my freshman year, when I was making out my program for my sophomore year with my faculty advisor, whose name you know, uh, the only I had five courses in my freshman year. Three of them were subjects that I studied in high school, in which the high school courses were much better than the Yale course. <laughs> the only two courses that were any good, and they, they were actually very good. One was government, and the other was uh, English lit. Mm -hmm. So I Amanda said that I would study, I would major in one of the two, and whichever one I majored in, the other, I'd do the other one in graduate school. Oh, interesting. So you had a bargain with yourself, as it were. Yeah. Well, I was also told my faculty advisor uh -huh. that. That's what he uh, said. The point, he, I, forget, I forget the exact words, but he, he told me no point in my going to graduate school because uh, liberal arts colleges were 100% close to Jews, mm -hmm. which they were before World War II. So, uh, so uh, anyway, I made up my mind I'd go ahead and just take my chances. Uh, so I left Yale in the spring of 1940. Uh, 40, yes, the spring of Okay. And I looked for a job. That's the only other alternative <laughs> at that point. Right. One which my father was worrying about much more than I was. Uh, my attitude was that he said he did such a good job supporting me. I didn't see why I, right. I should start worrying. But I couldn't find a job in New York. The unemployment was worse in New York in 1940 than it is today. And casting about for alternatives, I found that there was a program run by the Civil Service Commission, junior professional assistant. And there were a number of options. And the only option for which I had uh, filled all the requirements was public administration, <laughs> subject that I hated. Right. <laughs> so, and so you joined the New Deal at that point? Well, I said try to. Right. I, I, had, to I had to take an exam. And I knew that the exam was a difficult one because some of my fellow classmates at Yale who were getting their PhDs in public administration had flunked the course, flunked the exam. 
So I, I looked around and I found that there was a two semester course in public administration being given at the new school by somebody named Arnold Brecht. So I signed up for that course for English as part of I did a lot of work for that. I, all those Bookings Institute mm -hmm. studies of the Independent Regulatory Commission. Yes, yes. I waded through those from beginning to end. <laughs> and so was Strauss there at that point at the new school? He was, but I didn't know it. So it took a while to discover him. Well, what happened was that, as it turned out, that first of all, I found Brecht a wonderful teacher. I got more political theory for him. He was a neo-Kantian uh, than I had from old Coker in a whole year at Yale. Mm. And so I thought this was the place for me to go back to. And I knew that Brecht gave other courses. Uh, so when it was time for me to go back to school, I went back. I got in touch with Brecht, uh, who got me a scholarship, because we got along very well together. Mm -hmm. Later on, I had a course with him on the end of the Weimar Republic, oh, which mm -hmm. was wonderful. Yes, He had been a judge in Weimar Germany. So this was not a matter of theory only right? to him. So uh, anyway, they, so I went back to, and made out my program in the fall of 1944, and there was a course being given on Rousseau by L. Strauss. <laughs> and I just walked into the... <laughs> Walked into the classroom, a dilapidated. And that's that. That, that was, was the epic meeting between Leo Strauss was, and Harry That was Harry my Jaffa. episode on the road to Damascus. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you were con converted in the first class, or did it take a while? It took a while because I, I mean the change was so great. The whole idea that, that I'd been laboring under the cloud of historicism was all I'd known as I was. That was the only air, air that I knew. But now I saw that it was a, uh, in fact, one of my ambitions when I graduated in 39, uh, and it remained one of my great professional objectives, the three authors who mattered most to me when I, as an undergraduate, were Plato, Aristotle, and Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. It was my ambition to, to study Shakespeare by studying the Elizabethan drama, for, uh, by learning what the soil was out of which Shakespeare grew as, the, mm -hmm. as if he studied the soil instead of the flower. <laughs> and, and that soil included Plato and Aristotle. It did, yes, because I had this one course in classical civilization where we read a lot of, read much too much, but so, not enough to... And that's so uh, it's in this cauldron of the New School with Strauss present that Harry Jaffa becomes Harry Jaffa. Well, uh, I should mention that Leo Strauss had altogether become Leo Strauss either because <laughs> he, the course on Rousseau was Rousseau was a secret Socratic uh -huh. instead of being the secret enemy of all Socratic. I see. And maybe that Strauss was under a 180 degree change on on Rousseau. And Rousseau was natural right in history is is not the one that I studied that. Right. But the whole problem of interpretation. And then it was really the second course that I took with Strauss, which was a real, that was a course to really constant, the foundation of the metaphysics of morals mm -hmm. and uh, the Nicomachean ethics. Uh -huh. And it was in that course that Strauss read medieval commentaries on passages in Aristotle that I absolutely went wild on. And that's when I decided to write my dissertation on Thomas's commentary. I couldn't write or read the ones on, written in Arabic or, or Greek or whatever. Or Greek at that point, but Latin yeah, but, but you had? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, so that's when, that's when Harry the, uh, Jaffa begins to be Harry Jaffa. Right. 